recording. There we go. I'm recording. Uh, so we're going to start with just going over the syllabus, um, and then we're going to do a little bit of um, uh, a lecture. I'm going to talk about integration by parts. Um, but that's provided the syllabus and the and the D2L stuff um, can go quickly. I think it will. So uh, here we are on D2L. Uh, there's lots of things here. Over on the right side, I have this widget with a bunch of information. Information. So the Zoom room link and the password are there. Um, there's a link to the textbook, which, as you know, is uh, OpenStax. This is free. It's a lovely book. Not my absolute favorite book, but it's uh, it's fine. Um, this is volume two. We used volume one last semester. Um, we're pretty much going to skip chapter one because this is just uh, review stuff. Um, uh, and we are going to uh, actually start with chapter three. So uh, the book the book actually does applications of integration first before before finishing out the techniques of integration. I feel like since we were studying techniques of integration at the end of last semester, we should just pick up right there and do those first. So we're going to do chapter three uh, first uh, and then go back and do the applications in chapter two, just so you know. So, all right. Uh, so that's our textbook. That's where you, where you will find all your homework. Um, I, I actually, I'm just working on a document. I have homework problems picked out already, but I just need to put them together into a nice clean document. And then I will put those homework problems, uh, I'll, I'll upload that document here and I'll put a link to it right below textbook, okay? So you'll see that like tomorrow, maybe. Uh, we've also got the syllabus, which I'll open up because we're gonna need that. Um, Jamboards, uh, I, I, if you were with me last year, we used Jamboards a little bit. I've got a link to this nice um, uh, blank Jamboard. We might use this occasionally for activities in class, okay? Um, so there's a link to that if we need it. Uh, and then Desmos, of course. Uh, if, you, uh, if you've been with me before, you know I'm a fan of Desmos. Um, if you have never had taken a class with me, I'm a fan of Desmos. It is, uh, I, I generally build my class to use Desmos instead of a TI calculator. So you're not really required to have a TI calculator in this class. You can have one. It is a tool you're allowed to use, um, except for a TI-89, which does integration and differentiation for you. You're not allowed to use that. But otherwise, you can have one. Um, but my recommendation is to learn how to use Desmos and, uh, and use that because it's great. Uh, other information here, you know, uh, meeting times, contact information, that sort of thing. Uh, my, my help hours, which are the same as office hours, um, if you're if you know them by that name. I want to be very clear about this. You do not need to have a appointment to come into my help hours. They are walk-in hours. So on Monday and Wednesday, I will be in my office on campus. On Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I will be here on Zoom during these hours. So uh, just click on the Zoom link and find me there. Um, but yeah, you don't need an appointment. You can make an appointment if you want uh, to. You can email me or text me, and we can set up a time to meet. Um, if you text me, just make sure to tell me who you are, because my phone just shows me your phone number, and I don't know your phone numbers. So make sure to say, hey, this is, you know, John from Calc 2 or whatever. Um, so uh, there we go. Um, below this, there's a there's a little widget about tutoring. Um, if you're not already familiar with ARCC's tutoring services, there are a lot of them. Um, you know, there's the regular ARCC tutoring services, which you can get to via this link, but we also have this tutor.com service, which is available 24-7. Um, uh, you have, I think, 15 hours of tutor.com that you are allowed to use per academic year. So that's not for the semester, that's for the whole year. But that year ends uh, after the summer semester. So, you know, you have a lot of uh, tutor.com to use if you want to use it. Um, and then in the middle here, you'll see uh, my announcements. So at the bottom, I put my little, uh, hey, this is me, right? So uh, 
that's who I am. A little bit about me. Um, my contact info is down there too with links and stuff. Uh, and at the very bottom below, below the announcements, I actually have this content browser. I thought this might be a nice spot to put a little content browser. You can access the content by going up to materials and going to content. You can do that if you want to, but I also put it here. So you can open up these little folders and you know, click on these and for example, you know, click on that and it takes you to the, to the document page. All right, so that's what's on D2L. Any questions? There's a little more to it than just that, but you know, any questions so far? Keep an eye on these announcements, please, because uh, I will be posting uh, information here, like the schedule and whatever whatever assignments are due this week, uh, with links to them um, right there. So now, uh, under assessments, if you go to exercises, uh, I've renamed this um, on the in the menu. So it used to say, what did it used to say? Assessments? No, this is assessments. It used to say assignments. Now it says exercises. So this is where you're going to submit your exercises. All of your exercises are going to be submitted on D2L, right? So the exercise set that I handed out yesterday, that's due Friday. It's due here. Submit it right here. So you'll click on exercise set one. You'll uh, take your PDF that you have scanned. I can talk a little more about scanning when I get to the syllabus. Um, and you'll you know take that PDF file and you'll upload it here. You can say my computer, drag and drop into this box and uh, and add. Okay, so that's how you submit a file. Feel free to type messages to me in this comments box if you want to. You can use that to ask questions or just make any comments you wanted. That's great. Uh, nice little way to communicate something to your to your teacher right there. Okay. Um, this doesn't say quizzes anymore. I'm going to use the quiz functionality on on D2L to report homework scores. So now it says now that it says report homework, and it takes you to the quiz list. I'll put a quiz thing on here where you just sort of check some boxes, and it'll all be automated. Last semester I was having you report it in a different way. Um, this semester, I'm just going to automate it so I don't have to, I don't, I can just take it off of my to do list and, and, and just, it'll just, you just submit your scores and it goes into the grade book automatically. So that'll be great. Okay. Um, so once I have that set up, I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you how to do that. Um, so Salman asked a question in the chat Is it graded on correctness? Which thing were you asking about? Oh, the exercise. Yeah, the exercises are graded on correctness. Yeah. So um, last semester I was doing worksheets. It's going to be very similar to that. I just broke it out into much smaller, like smaller chunks. Um, so uh, yeah, those exercise sets are going to be graded on correctness and I'll give a bunch of feedback. Um, and I'm going to change the way I grade it a little bit uh, so that it's letter grades instead of like points. Um, so I'm experimenting with I'm experimenting with 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 shifting away from points and more to like focusing a lot more on just the feedback with a single letter grade to like for the overall like quality of your assignment. Homework is not graded on correctness. I'm not even going to look at your homework. You just tell me what percentage of the homework you've got done and that goes into the grade book automatically. It's going to be worth 5% of your total overall grade. Okay. So you don't need to be scanning and submitting homework assignments. I really, I'm, I'm just going to look at your, the exercises that I, that I, that I assign you. Exercise sets and quizzes are the only things I'll be looking at. Because that's plenty. <laughs> I don't have time to look at anything else. All right, let's get into the syllabus here. Uh, I guess I have two of those open. Let's close one. All right, so here's the syllabus. I'll uh, bring this into a slightly larger window. Let's go through some things here. Uh, most of this uh, you already know about meeting times, my contact info, textbook. All right, so here's the here's the course components and the grades. Um, activities and lessons. The activities are what we're going to be doing on campus together. The lessons refers to you know our Zoom, you know the sort of Zoom lectures. Uh, so this is basically your participation grade right here. Okay. 
your participation is going to be 5%. I'm going to keep track of that a little more, more strictly than I did last semester. Last semester, it was a little bit vague, and I just kind of, uh, I just kind of tracked it not too closely, but I'm going to be, I just, I'm just going to be a little more organized about it this semester. So I'll have like a, you know, a sign-in sheet. So eventually I'll have that sorted out. I was just setting that up before class and it'll be a nice like thing that I print out and you'll just check, check, check off by your name to say that you've been there. And I'll just hand that around a class or we'll find a way to do it over Zoom. I might do like a roll call. Um, so the uh, submitted exercises that you're going to be doing roughly once a week, um, nice, short, those are always going to be pretty short. I, 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 my goal is to keep them all to a single piece of paper. Okay, so front and back, uh, never multiple pages. Um, but, uh, you know, that's my goal. Um, and those are going to be 45%. That's our main back and forth, right? Our main mechanism for you submitting work problems to me and me and me, you know, giving you feedback on them. So uh, that's 45%. And like I said, those are just going to be graded on like an A to F scale. Um, trying to back away from points here, trying to trying to back away from grades and be a little more focused just on the learning. And as you go, I will be telling you like, this is A level work, or this is B level work, just to just, you know, so that you have some concept of like how you're doing. And that will go into the grade book. Um, but uh, yeah, that's why I want to do A to F instead of points. Um, there, is, there are other exercises that you'll be doing. Um, we'll call it homework. Um, it's really important that you do those because um, I, I can only look at and grade and give feedback on a certain volume of your work. But you need to be doing a lot more than that to learn this stuff, right? Like if you just do the stuff that I am giving you feedback on that I'm collecting, then that's not going to be enough. So you, you got to be doing more than that. Uh, and that's this, but it's sort of like an inherent part of the course. Okay. It's only 5% of your overall grade. Cause I'm not really looking at it, uh, but it is really important that you do it. That makes sense. So don't allow that 5% that that should not communicate to you that it isn't important. It just communicates that this is not what I'm basing the grade on. If you're not doing this, then I guarantee you your exercises and your quizzes are going to be pretty bad because you're just not getting enough progress. You're not getting enough. That's the wrong word. Not progress. You're not getting enough practice. Okay. Is that clear? Uh, so the quizzes are going to be very similar to the submitted exercises, except, of course, they're in class. And um, uh, the difference is, you know, with exercises, it's like worksheets. You can work with your with your with your with your, with your um, classmates. You can use your resources. You know, you've got the textbook, you've got your notes. Um, but with quizzes, it's individual assessments that we do in class. Um, and they, and so, you know, you don't have access to all those resources. You're not working with your classmates, uh, but otherwise, I mean, same types of problems, and I'm going to be grading them in a similar way with feedback and everything. Okay. So just two different ways of assessing you. All right. Uh, it's like your, 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 you know, it makes sense to have like, this is stuff that you, you can get help on with your, you know, from tutors or from, from your classmates, but this is just you. This is like, okay, now it's time to show me what you, what you, you have learned individually and where you are at. Okay. So that's why I have those two. That's the philosophy there. That's 25%. And then at the end of the semester, we'll have a, a final exam, just one exam. So last semester I did these like cumulative exams. I'm not going to do that again. Um, it's just going to be one exam. One big exam at the end, 20%. How long do I expect quizzes to be on average? Not too long. Um, I mean, it's not like an exam, not like, like like last semester, we'd have like test one over unit one. It's more going to be like half of that, you know? It might end up being, I'm gonna, I'd like to try to keep it to just one piece of paper front and back again, like the, like the exercises. Um, we'll see. Uh, again, I, I need it to be something that I can grade. 
Um, I, I've kind of done the math on how much time I can I can spend on each person. And if I give every every student that I have this semester the same amount of time, I will be I have four minutes. Four minutes per person per week. OK, four minutes per person per week. There's a question about how often those quizzes are going to occur. To answer that question, let's scroll all the way down here and take a look at the schedule. Here is our uh, schedule. Can I zoom? Oh, there's the zoom. Here's our schedule. So uh, the first quiz is Wednesday of next week. Um, and then we're going to have another quiz uh, in week five. OK. Um, then we have our next quiz in week eight. All right, so I guess it's roughly every three weeks. Yeah, about every three weeks. It's going to be five quizzes total. Okay. While we're on this page, I guess you can look at what else is here. Um, there's a ton of other things here. You know, it tells you like what, uh, where we're going to be on each day. Uh, whether it be on campus or on Zoom, tells you what uh, what section of the textbook we're going to be talking about that day, um, when the exercise sets are due. All right, so the first one's due Friday. Second one won't be due until after our first quiz. Um, yeah, this has got like days when we have when we don't have class, like Martin Luther King Jr. Day, for example. Uh, these homework deadlines, like Chapter Three homework here. Um, that is for when I expect you to upload, you know, to submit your completion score. You don't actually, it's not really a due date in the sense that um, you can submit your completion score later. You can update your completion score later. So with homework, if you want to go, if you don't do all the chapter three homework right now in chapter three, say, um, say, for example, you only do like 50% of the homework and you submit a score of 50%. Because of course you're going to be honest. Later in the semester, if you find yourself with some, some a little extra time uh, or some a little extra motivation, maybe you can go back and do some more homework from chapter three, and then resubmit a score, and it'll just automatically get uploaded, you know, and, and factored into your grade, and then you have a better grade on that homework part on that portion of the homework. Um, yeah, you can do that as many times as you want before the end of the semester. You can keep up, updating your own your own homework scores. Uh, and there's no need to use a late pass or anything for homework. Okay, so this is this is this is a change from last semester as well. Last semester I was a little more tightly controlled with the homework, but this semester I'm just saying, look, homework is on you. It's your responsibility. You you keep up with it. You submit it yourself, and so that is entirely your responsibility to put that in the gradebook. Okay, um, and you just update it again if if you if you do some more. Okay. So that's how I'm doing the homework. Um, that's about all I want to say on this page right now. Does anyone have questions about this schedule? Okay. I'm going to scroll back up here um, to uh, the page where we have all the policies. Um, so, uh, scanning instructions, um, most of you have done this scanning before, but if you have, if you've never figured out how to do the scanning before, then I, I need you to do that. I'm going to be a little more of a, of a, of a, um, stickler about scanning. I need you to submit single PDF documents with the pages in order and oriented correctly so that I can read them, right? Like I was saying, I have four minutes per person per week. That's how much time I have to give feedback to you. OK, and if I need to flip between different pages to find things, if I need to need to be rotating the pages, you know, that's just super annoying. And, and it just takes away from time I could be spent time that could be spent looking at your work and actually giving you feedback. OK, so I would rather you take the extra five minutes to, like, make sure that it's scanned nicely before you submit it, because I have 90 students to give feedback to every week. And I'm going to try to give every student some feedback on some of their work every single week. And and that's that's my goal for this semester. I've planned it all out. I have blocks of time when I'm going to be doing 
critique. Okay, that is my sort of like my grading time, but I'm calling it critique because that's my goal really is to be is to spend that time looking at your work and critiquing it to help you learn. Um, and the grading is just sort of a byproduct of that. All right. So why am I just why am I just I don't know why am I, why am I just highlighting things? I guys I you'll notice I I just highlight things sporadically, sort of it's like a tick. Um, uh -huh. sorry about that. Uh -huh. But yeah, so that's that's why I really need you to scan things properly. So if you don't know how to scan, please figure it out. Um, you can ask me. I can help you. Uh, like maybe in class after class during a help hour, just come in and I'll like show you how to do it. But there's a video here that a nice video that shows you how to do it. Uh, naming convention for the submissions doesn't, I don't really mind just, you know, maybe whatever works well for you. Um, because for me, it's not really going to matter how it's named because I don't really handle the files. For me, it's all through D2L. Um, like I view it on D2L and I give the feedback on D2L. So the actual file name doesn't matter. So just whatever you want for your own records uh, is fine. I recommend, you know, keeping track of everything so that you can look back at it and use it for studying later. So um, the last thing I want to talk about on here is late passes and redos. Um, uh, a late pass is for if you miss something, no excuse necessary. You don't have to like explain to me why you missed it. So if you were just feeling kind of off that day and you just were like, man, I just need to take a walk and that'll make, that's what I need right now. And I don't have time to do this homework because I have to take a walk. Um, like that's fine. If that's the reason you want to use a late pass, no big deal. You don't even have to tell me that. You can just say, I'm going to use a late pass and I'll say, okay, my rules are this. You have to do it within 24 hours of the original deadline. It could be after the original deadline. So, you know, maybe you miss it because you're in the ER. You don't have to be texting me from the ER. Just do it later. You know, but within within a day, um, you can let me know you want to use a late pass. When you use a late pass, it extends the deadline by one week. That's it. Uh, so you have three of those to use for the semester. I handed them out. So don't lose them because if you lose them, they're gone. So just like, you know, cut those into little strips and hand them into me when you want to, when you want, when with your assignment. Uh, now a redo is a little different. A redo is more like, oh, you bombed a quiz or you submitted your exercises, but you, but like you got a bad grade on them, then you can redo it. Um, for exercises, it'll be more of a, like, just correct your mistakes and turn it in again. So it won't be different problems, but for quizzes, I'll actually give you some different problems to work on. Okay. So like I'll write a different version of the quiz. Quiz redos will be done at the testing center uh, on the Rapids campus. Okay. And with a redo, the it, again, it's not like you can just do it whenever. There is a time constraint here. Uh, you have to tell me that you'd like to use one of your redo passes within two weeks of the original deadline. If it's more than two weeks, then the redo is off the table. And uh, so you just, whatever grade you originally had, you just keep it. Um, this making sense? Yep, the redo replaces the new grade. Uh, there's no penalty for using a redo. So it's not like um, I'm gonna take off 20% or anything like that. It's just, it's just you just redo it and the new grade is your new grade. Uh, unless you do worse, if you do worse the second time, then you get to keep your original grade. I guess I'll, and I'd rather give you the better of the two grades. But I don't expect that'll be a thing that happens. Uh, there's five quizzes and about 10 exercise sets. So that's like 15 different assignments that you have throughout the semester. Roughly, I mean, really exactly one per week. All right. Uh, the thing about academic integrity down here, please read that in detail. Uh, score of zero will happen if you cheat. Uh, cheating includes things like using CHEG. That was that, that was a big problem in previous semesters. Um, you know, if you're using Mathway or Symbol Lab or Wolfram Alpha to, to, to complete your assignments, uh, that would be cheating. Um, so don't do that. And also like collaborating with partner with, with with other classmates during a quiz, that would be cheating as well, because 
the quizzes are supposed to be individual assessments, not collaborative assessments. So those things are true. No cheating. That's about it. Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't really read it or talk about anything else on here. But there's some good stuff. You know, just um, resources for veterans, um, other campus resources, uh, tons of things for accommodations. Uh, you need the paperwork to get the accommodations, but otherwise, I'm happy to do all of that. Uh, as long as I got a form. Technology rentals, if you need a computer. And then I put some strategies for success on here, folks. You know, come to the help hours. You don't have to have an appointment. Okay, plan your time, read the textbook. Um, always come to class, take notes during class, work together, right? Connect with your peers and get on get on your discords and your, what else do you guys use these days? Signal, what do kids use? Uh, I mean, most of you are using discord, right? Oh, Insta. There you go. Get on your social medias, connect with each other, set up a time to study or work on the work on the exercises together. Uh, yeah, by all means. OK. Uh, OK, so that's that. Let's put that away. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So I'm going to do a roll call here. OK. Uh, get ready to um, either get on the mic. Get on your mic or or on the chat and tell me that you're here. Okay, I'm going to go through and just say names. In a second, I can figure out, I can get my chat back. There we go. There's the chat. Okay. All right, Ali. We have Ali. Oh, I'm not seeing Ali. Okay, Alfred. Here. Thelma. Here. Uh, Braden. Here. Bree. Bree. Here. Caleb. Katie? Got it. Chris? Chris. Got you, Chris. Dakota? Yeah. Got Dakota? Daniel? Got Daniel? Diego? I saw you in the chat earlier. Copy, Red Leader. Uh, sorry? Copy, Red Leader. Copy, Red Leader. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. Uh, Emma. Here's Emma. Hayden. Hudson. Good. Ibrahim. Oh, there you are. And Isa. Peter. Okay, a few more. Uh, let's see, Wes. Here. Joe. Here. Uh, Josh. Gotcha. Kyle. I saw you earlier. Laura. Here. Got it. Madison. Yeah. Maddie. Mark. Matt. Here. Nathaniel. Parker. Ryan. Salman. Got it. Cheyenne. Sophia. Sweet. All right. Thanks, y'all. I'll find I'll see if I can find some way to like do that digitally where I just like send you a link to something and then you can just check it off. I'm sure there's some fancy creative version of that that I can come up with. Okay. Oops. 
So last semester, I uh, I had to do everything on paper because I didn't have a decent stylus. This semester, I finally got a new stylus and I can actually write on my screen again. Okay, Google Form. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Katie, for that suggestion. I'll look into that. Um, and yeah, right? Thank God. All right, took, took a long time to get the stylus, but they came through, they came through for me. All right, so let's talk about uh, our first section, uh, 3.1, which is gonna be on um, integration by parts. Here we go. So integration by parts is like, it's like inverse power rule. Nope, sorry, I said that wrong. Inverse product rule is what I meant to say. So let's start with the product rule for derivatives. We have, um, uh, if you wanna take the derivative of the product of two functions, we have it looks like this, f prime times g plus f times g prime. Does that look familiar? So what we want to do is uh, like take this and figure out um, how can you rearrange this uh, into something involving integrals. So we're going to integrate both sides of our equation here. So copy what I had here. Okay, I'm gonna integrate everything. I'm gonna integrate the left side, okay? And then I'm gonna integrate the right side and I'm gonna use the sum rule for integration, which says that the integral of the right side is the sum of the integrals of the two parts, the two terms, okay? So I'm just integrating everything. Uh, this is valid because if two things are equal, if two functions are equal, their antiderivatives are equal up to the addition of a, of a constant, right? But like, you know, we can sort of put plus Cs on both sides and say, well, you know, they would be equal for some value of C. Um, that's the only way that they could be different is by a, by, a, by a constant sum. So that's why this is a valid thing to do. Now on the left side, I'm gonna wave my hands a little bit here because there's a little bit of, a little bit of vagary, but basically on the left side, we have a derivative of something and then we have the integral of the derivatives. And those two, those two operations, differentiate followed by integrate, they're going to undo each other, right? Derivative, antiderivative. We should get back to what we started with. So the left side of this equation is now just f times g. It's the product of two things. I'm gonna start writing this out a little more in a little more detail for this, for our final version here. Well, actually, this is not quite our final version. So we'll get to that final version. When I do the, when I do, do the final version, I'll write it out with arguments. Uh, so we have that on the left side. Um, and now, how are we going to use this? Well, what we want to do is find a way of integrating a product, but the but the integral of a product is not over here. It's not fg. The product that we're going to be looking at, we have to interpret that as the derivative of one thing, of one function, times another function. And it doesn't really matter which of these two we interpret it as. We can interpret the first function as the derivative of f and the second function as g. Or we could interpret the first function as f and the second function as the derivative of g. It doesn't really matter because it's commutative anyway, right? So like just one order or the other. The point is that one of these things is going to be the way we interpret our integral of a product, okay? So if we see like x times cosine of x, then that's two functions. One of them is, is a function, and the other one is the derivative of some other function. And those two functions are called f and g. Or we could call them that, right? So, um, so what I want to do is solve this equation for one of these two. So traditionally, we start with this one. And we say, um, solving for that, we get the integral of f prime of x times g of x is equal to the product of the original f of x times g of x, some original f of x that you're going to need to figure out. 
right? Because if the function, if the integral you start with, if you're seeing f prime, you have to figure out what f is by doing an antiderivative to get there. Okay, so we're going to find that. And then we'll get that product minus an integral of f of x times g prime of x. It's the other way around, right? Where the sort of the, the, der the derivative, which one is the derivative and which one is not a derivative is kind of switched, right? So this is, um, this is a, a way to, uh, this is a way to write um, the, what is called integration by parts rule. And the parts in question are the, the two factors in the product, the, the like the, the F and the G. Oops. Now, this is one way to write it using Fs and Gs. I've done it this way first because this is how, because we did it with Fs and F and G back in uh, Calc 1. But more commonly, you use U and V in place of F and G. So the more common version of this looks like this. Um, and actually, even that is not, not as simplified as it could be. There's a slightly simpler version here. So that's just replacing F and G with U and V, right? But then if you look at U prime times DX, the u prime times the x actually equals du. Like that's a du, right? With the, the relationship between the du and the dx differentials looks like that, right? And over here, similarly, the v prime times dx, that's just dv, right? So actually, um, another simpler way to write this is like this. So that is kind of a, the shorthand version of the earlier box. Okay, so shorter. Okay. Let's do an example. Let's do the one I said earlier. X times cosine of X. Okay. Now um, I need to interpret this, these two, these two factors in this product. One of them I need to interpret as u. I'm sorry, actually looking at this here. One of them I need to interpret as v, and the other one I need to interpret as du. Or in other words, one of them needs to be g, and the other one needs to be f prime. That kind of makes sense. Oh, I just realized I messed this up. Oh, I just realized that I messed this up. Um, I mean, I didn't mess it up. Like, nothing's wrong. I just realized that the way that I usually do this is the opposite. Uh, as I was saying that out loud uh, just a minute ago, I was thinking, oh, you know, actually, that's not the way I usually do it. I usually do it the other way. Um, so here, I'll explain, I'll explain what I mean. There's a U and there's a DU. There's a V and there's a DV, okay? Uh, so like you're, you've kind of got four things here and these are the four things that are involved in the formula, right? In this, in this result, result of this, we have two functions and we have their derivatives. Um, and you need to set it up so that um, one of the two integrals you're gonna be working with is this uh, product, U times DV. And the other of the two integrals you're going to be working with is v times du, all right? And actually, I so let me go back and, and fix this. What I, the way I usually do it, and there's nothing wrong with the way I wrote it here, but it's just not my it's just not my habit. So my habit is to have it the other way around, where actually the g prime is there, and then the f prime is actually over here. There we go. So I fixed it. So now what I should have done is circled. Um, this one. Like I was saying earlier, it doesn't really matter which of the two you pick. You just got to pick one. 
I, I'd rather do that one over there. There we go. Okay. So um, down here, it's going to be u v prime, and this one's going to be u prime v. And then this is a v. v prime u is dv. And this will be u, and this will be a u. And then u prime dx is du. So the result is switched around. Our u's and v's are, 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 are going to swap places. We are going to have u dv equals uv minus v du. Did I do that right? Yeah, there we go. There we go. OK, so that way, what you, what you see here is going to show up in that diagonal. You you take the two functions, you put them in 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 the in this diagonal, and then we're gonna work with the opposite diagonal later on. Okay, so um, let's do it. We have two options. We have x and cosine x. One of them is gonna go here, and the other one is gonna go here. We could do it this way. If we do it this way, we then have to take a derivative here. And we have to do an antiderivative here. So that's one option. The other option is to flip them around. We could put cosine of x here, and we could put x with the dx here. Then we have to do a derivative here, and we have to do an antiderivative here. So, which of those two options do you want to do? Ooh, I love it when there's disagreement. We have a vote for number one, and we also have a vote for number two. <laughs> oh, more. So yeah, OK, so more votes for one, another vote for two. Um, let's try both. Everybody who voted for number one, Let's try number one. Everybody who voted for number two, we'll try number two. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's take this. Oopsie daisy. I want a rectangle. Take this and shift it down here. Make everything a little smaller so we have more space. Yeah. OK. So uh, we'll try number one first. If we take a derivative of x, we get 1 dx. So if u equals x, du is 1 dx, right? If dv is cosine of x dx, then v, we have to do an antiderivative of cosine. Who could tell me the antiderivative of cosine? Is that sine or is it negative sine? Positive sine, isn't it? Yeah. So there's our sine x. So now uh, we would apply our formula. So if this is um, if this is our u d v right here, this is u. Uh, all of this actually is d v. The way I've set it up at the moment. If that's u d v, then what we're going to do is u v. It's going to be u v minus the integral of v d u. So that's going to look like u times v. So these two things multiplied together. It's x times sine x. And then minus the integral of the other diagonal product. So instead of, uh, you know, we started by assigning the two functions to that diagonal. And now we're going to get an integral of the other diagonal. So that's 1 times sine of x. So it would look like that. And now we just have to integrate that, right? So now we do, we're not done because we have another integral to do. But it's a different integral than it was before. And with any luck, it's easier. Right? Like we started with the integral of x times cosine x, and now we just have to do the integral of sine x. It's easier. So the result is the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine. Uh, and we get. Um, so I guess that becomes like x sine x plus cosine x plus c. And that's our antiderivative. 
Let's try it the other way. Okay, the other way. Um, we had our u, in this, in this version, cosine of x is u, and then the du is a combination of x dx. Sorry, the dv, I mean, is a combination of x and dx, right? So um, in this version, we had to take a derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, and then we have to take an antiderivative of x, which is a half x squared. Okay. By the way, when you do the antiderivative here, you do not need to put a plus c on the end because we really just need like an antiderivative. And we and it's you just take the simplest one. Okay. Um, so then if we set it up this way, when we apply our formula. I'm going to write it out again. We're going to get uv minus integral of v du, right? So the first thing we get is cosine x times a half x squared. I'll write it in this order. And then we have to minus the integral of the opposite diagonal product, which is the negative sine of x times a half x squared. So negative a half x squared sine x. All right. So we started with um, with this integral, and now we have uh, this, which involves this integral. I mean, these are equal, but is it any easier than the previous integral we started with? I would say that that integral is significantly harder. Um, So in this case, um, in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna claim that it's pretty it's pretty objective. I don't think there's a lot of opinion here. I think that uh, I think that it's pretty clear that the first way works great and the second way is a bit of a, a bit of a bust. Um, so you know you never really know until you try. Um, but with experience, you'll be you'll learn to uh, be able to sort of see. You sort of predict, you know, oh, you can start thinking several steps ahead and realize, aha, if I assign the functions in this order, then it's going to work well, you know, because I can see that the derivative here is going to be that and then whatever. Whereas if I assign them in the other order, it's um, it's uh, it's going to be a little harder, you know. So there is like a mnemonic that the textbook presents for how to remember, like for how to, to sort of guide you into which one is worth assigning, which one is you should put where. Um, I don't even study, I don't even like, I don't really like that mnemonic. I don't teach it. I, if you want to look at it, it's in the textbook. But my approach to this sort of thing is just more sort of like, just do, just practice it with a bunch of examples and then you will kind of learn it. Um, you'll figure it out. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so when you do the when you do the antiderivative you, uh, of the dv to get the v, you do not need to worry about putting a plus c on there. Yep, that's that's uh, all you need is actually an antiderivative, not like a general antiderivative. So uh, we can omit that plus c. Um, yeah. All right, uh, that's it for today, folks. Um, some folks are heading out. We're at, we're, at, we're at the end of our time. There was a question in the chat. Um, this, this strategy is what you can use for the exercises. Um, so several of the exercises in the first set are, are gonna involve this strategy. Um, uh, yeah. I will export this and put it up on T12, by the way. And I'll do that every, every time we're doing a Zoom lecture. You will see it on D12. Okay. Have a good one, folks.
this is only one page, so 110, 23. I should put like count two on here, maybe. There we go. Uh, oh, and then yes, I am also recording, so stop the